Welcome Sukhyan and welcome all our investors present here in, in this uh, in this webinar called Ask the Experts by AIF and PMS Experts India. This is the webinar that we, con we conduct on monthly basis to, um, to, give, to give all our investors an update about uh, about uh, the AMCs and their different products, and uh, with the we discuss each and every issue and current market trends with with the experts. Here today with us, Mr. Sugyan Lohia, senior vice senior vice president, Zonal Head West Motilal Oswal AMC. Welcome to you once again, Sugyan. Thank you, Srinath. Very happy to be here and. Um... Thank you for having me here today. Pleasure to be Thank speaking you. with your investors. Same here. Same here. The subject of today's webinar is actually process to performance. Motila Oswal AMC 2.0 alternatives and Gift City. As you all know that Gift City is the is the new uh, investment alternatives that is emerging in India. Today we will uh, We'll read the mind of uh, Mr. Sugya uh, that how um, the how the gift city investment could, could be a beneficial for specifically the, specifically the all NRI clients. He will uh, he will brief us about the gift city and the products that Mukhtar um, Oswal. It's offering to us. Over to you, Mr. Uh, Sugyan. You can brief us about the, the AMC and, and um, gift city products. Over to you. Thank you, Srinath, for that uh, wonderful uh, brief and uh, introduction. Um, as I said before, pleasure to be here and to be speaking about investment products. So everyone out there who's listening to us today, thank you for taking the time and thinking about your wealth and how to grow your wealth. Um, before we get into the uh, most exciting part of the talk, which is understanding Gift City and also the product offering which we have over there, I wanted to start with a brief overview about uh, Motila Loswal. So as a group, you know, we've just completed uh, 37 years of legacy in equity and equity alone. As a house, we've focused on only one asset class. We believe in uh, focused work and only operating businesses where we have expertise uh, rather than being very diversified or across the board. So within capital markets, we've chosen equities as our field. Uh, within the group, uh, you know, there are multiple businesses like uh, 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 research back broking, institutional equity, private equity, private wealth, investment banking. But I represent the asset management business of uh, Motila Loswal Group. And true to the group's culture, our asset management business also focuses only on equity products for our investors. So we've been around for more than two decades now, completing 21 years. Uh, in fact, we started our legacy in 2003 with PMS product and later, of course, um, uh, in due time expanded into mutual funds and AIF as well. Uh, but alternates is where we were, uh, we first started our journey and where we built our competency for more than two decades. Um, how that has benefited us greatly today is that uh, Gift City is the most uh, innovative and newest offering in India for investors to look into. And our past experience and infrastructure has allowed us to be one of the first AMCs to come up with our Gift City offering. And it is the current offering which I'm going to be talking to you about once we cover Gift City advantages is in the AIF structure. Right. And this is where uh, we manage in under AIFs, we manage more than 10,000 crores today. We are the largest category three AIF manufacturer in the country, uh, given that the product uh, line 
by SEBI has uh, given us a runway of about eight, nine years. But in this very short period of time, we've seen tremendous interest from domestic as well as NRI investors. Right. In fact, amongst NRI investors, we have uh, uh, we have the largest list of countries approved to invest into our domestic product. And now with Gift City coming in, this whole opportunity really uh, explodes and allows all countries to invest into India as well as all types of structures to invest into India, which I'll be getting more into uh, once we discuss on who all can invest into the product. But before that, uh, just to give you an idea on why was Gift City created and what is its ultimate purpose. Right? So uh, the primary purpose of Gift City uh, over and above the very thriving uh, investment product uh, economy of India is because our government and as a country, we want foreign currency inflow coming in. It's good for the country. It's good for economy. It's good for capital markets. Right? And it's good for our currency as well. So um, India ha is, as many of you already know, is the fastest growing large size nation in the world. We are still punching uh, more than 6% growth last year as well as forecasted for this year and next year. I mean, you can look at averages across our government, RBI, you can look at World Bank, or any other international uh, uh, agencies as well who project GDP growth and you'll always get a number which is 6% or higher in fact than 6%. So our counterparts in the world which are in the high growth phase like uh, China uh, and other uh, Southeast countries are still not putting up this kind of number and on a base of almost $4 trillion, a 6 6.5% real GDP growth is uh, is really attractive for an investor base to uh, look at and also large enough for investors to not be able to ignore anymore right so you have a lot of uh, funds you have a lot of uh, sovereign funds you have a lot of pension funds who do invest beyond their domestic uh, market who who are actively increasing their allocation to india and now all these uh, institutions as well as NRIs as well as foreign citizens will find it extremely easy to put money into Indian equity markets and other capital market areas through the gift city route right so so just highlighting who all can invest firstly is the NRI market which will who are already connected to their Indian roots who are following what's happening in our economy and the growth which we have seen over the last decade um, and are very much interested in investing in equities. Um, uh, the NRI market alone captures about $3.1 trillion of assets globally. Right? And, uh, uh, and Give City, uh, Give City's own numbers are projecting 40,000 crores of inflow this year. Right? So NRI has become the first opportunity. The second uh, cohort of people who can invest in individual capacity are foreign citizens. So you do not have to have any roots in India to put money in Indian equity through Gift City, right? You can be from any nation. Third is all sorts of investment vehicles. So companies, trusts, partnership, LLC, whichever type of entity um, you may be running in your home country, all these uh, vehicles can now enter into India which was earlier a very big task to do, right? There were quite many hurdles. If, if you were not NRI, if you were pure foreigner, if you were pure foreign investment vehicle to come into India, now the path is very much clear. Right? Um, were you adding something, Shina? Uh, nothing, nothing. But just to, uh, just to ask uh, the next part is, you can you can also highlight on inward and outward also yeah absolutely part of the, uh, that could be also a, a very interesting part yeah or uh, the, you can overview so the fund flow as Srinath has highlighted can work both ways now the terminology is very simple um, inward funds means the funds which originate outside of India so for example the Motila Loswal offering which we have for you today 
is an inbound fund. Right, which means uh, uh, dollar assets from outside of India, specifically U.S. dollar assets, are coming into India through the gift city route. But it works the other way round also. So, um, as you may know, RBI allows through the uh, LRS route for even Indian citizens to transfer money abroad for various reasons. The primary reason being investment opportunities. So there is a per person limit, which is quite healthy. It's 250,000 US dollars, uh, where uh, this amount of money every financial year you can allocate towards international investments. And again, these funds which you allocate to may be routed through the gift city. Right. So both these opportunities are available and it's kind of a very healthy uh, two way uh, transaction uh, uh, institution, which gift city has set up for us. Right. All right. Now, yeah. Go ahead, Shina. Yeah, you, we are on. We are on the right path. You can go ahead with, with the uh, next part of your. Uh, Absolutely. So, your in fact, so moving beyond, you know, uh, the list of people who can actually now invest, uh, it is the main advantage comes from the ease of investing or for a manufacturer like us, the ease of onboarding an investor. Um, a lot of the hurdles has been uh, bulldozed through over here because what our sense is that the regulator IFSC is very forward looking and is very uh, goal based, is very growth mindset oriented that uh, we really need to make this chapter a big success and attract uh, foreign capital into our country. And for that, um, a lot of the previous restrictions have now been eased off. Um, for example, the onboarding process which we are offering in our fund is a digital onboarding, which means that you will get your forms over mail and uh, and after you've uh, you know filled in the forms given your due signatures we just need the forms back on email so your entire transaction wherever you are sitting in the world you do not have to depend on couriering physical documents you don't have to wait for your advisor or your manufacturer to send you those documents uh, and the number of it days it takes to reach you then you do the due, due process at your end and then courier back and then goes to it. So a lot of time is being saved once you take your investment decision that you really want to go ahead with your investment idea. Everything can be done uh, on a digital process. For physical bookkeeping, yes, documents may be required, but uh, that will not stop your transaction. The second very big advantage, and I'm saying this out of experience because I was head of NRI desk at uh, Mutila Loswal for a bit of time. Uh, the biggest complaint which I received from investors is that they find it very troublesome to uh, route their money through their home bank branch. You know, it's very logical that uh, they may not have kept close ties uh, with their banking partner and may find it difficult to reapproach them and uh, have their transaction go through smoothly. And here you are looking at a uh, at a transaction which is firstly dollar in dollar out. So US dollars move from your home bank account into the IFSC account. And at the time of redemption, when you need your money back, you get US dollars in your home account back. Right. So there is no conversion pressure at your at the client's end that you have to negotiate with the bank, get the best rate, you know, first transfer to your home account and then into the investment products uh, scheme account. It is the it is the most beneficial part uh, of the of the uh, Keep City investment. The investors uh, who are here uh, online should listen this this once again, if you could if you could uh, uh, um, brief once again, uh, Sugyan, I would I would request you to go uh, through this part. Part. Absolutely, it is it is the focal point of our discussion today. That the investors need to send U.S. dollars from their home bank account into the uh, Gift City scheme account. And at the time of wanting your money back, you will again get US dollars in your home account. 
there is no need to go through a third party a banking channel or make any efforts otherwise to have your funds corpus reach the manufacturer right this this will stand as the biggest advantage of gift city uh, in terms of ease of investing in indian capital markets understood understood the next question obviously which comes comes in, in the mind of every investor is taxation part sure i would like you to uh, show some light on the taxation part for nris as as well as uh, the foreign foreign entity or foreign foreign uh, nationals also absolutely totally. yeah so um, gift city on its own is not charging any additional taxes right so first we must understand that the taxation at gift city level depends on the underlying structure which which is being offered by the manufacturer or being advised by the intermediary advisor so for example if you take the aif structure to start with aif category 3 in india already pays taxes to the government at the same rate as what a domestic investor would be paying so for example if there are long term trades which are specified more than one year um they are charged at 10% tax on profits a short term trade which is classified as under one year is charged at 15% capital gain short term capital gain and dividends are fully taxable the same rate at this same rate the category 3 aif pays taxes on a regular basis to the indian government so from an aif structure when you are redeeming money out your funds are tax paid in india so you no investor has to worry about paying taxes to indian government when the funds come back to you in your home country that is when all the double taxation treaties of india become available to you as your benefit for example in uae and singapore there is no capital gain tax and your funds have already the, the scheme has already paid taxes in india so at your end there is further no more tax liability for example if you talk about uh, countries uh, like the us where they may have a higher tax lab than india then we provide the k1 certificate for us investors where i believe the us investor has to pay differential tax in their home country so here a ca will be able to step in well of the home country and close the leg for you in terms of knowing what is your tax outgo but only in your home country because india part is taken care of in aif structure i must cover the mutual fund structure as well because there also is a very big benefit in india mutual funds are equity mutual funds are passed through taxation so right. the fund itself does not pay taxes to the government right the tax the tax is to be paid at the time of redemption by the investor but gift city does not allow does not need for the investor to pay taxes right so right. for an, again taking the same example as before for a uae investor who uses gift city as a feeder tool into our uh, equity mutual funds they would be getting tax free money from india into their home account and then they just have to consider their home tax regime if uae singapore zero or else you look at the uh, tax outgo as per your own slab right so uh, uh, these are two structures which will be very much beneficial for investors to look at in fact funds which do deploy derivatives as an investment strategy if the fund is domiciled in gift city there is going to be no taxes on derivatives right a, a very very quick example which comes to mind is long short funds in long short funds there is leverage as well as hedging so the gains from the derivatives component of that fund can attract a very high tax lap in an aif structure which is domestically domiciled but if that same aif structure is domiciled in gift city they do not have to pay taxes 
on that derivative gain so you will yeah. find a huge range of products will come up in gift city at least from motilal oswal side every 3 uh, 4 months we plan to come up with a new offering and an innovative offering for investors to look at and i'm sure peer manufacturers uh, of ours in the industry uh, have also planned a lineup of products similarly right so lot of action from gift city you can expect going forward thank you thank you very much it's, it's a very valuable information for all the uh, online investors that will be there on on our call there is a, there is interestingly a one uh, one uh, one question from our uh, online uh, investor shall, shall i ask you yes please go ahead thanks thanks uh one investor is uh, asking that what are the documents required for opening account under gift city thank you thank you for that question it's part of my uh, thought through agenda to cover yeah so um even the documentation requirement has been eased off right i mean so many nri investors uh, cannot complete their transaction in india because of one document missing from that very big kyc list which is required for example it is uh, it's quite common for nri to not own property or not have an indian address proof anymore because they're living for decades outside it makes no sense for them to have an indian address proof but without that you cannot be an investor over here it's an absolutely mandatory part of kyc so here very simply put very simple to understand is that we are asking you documents only of your home country you do not even need a pan to be an investor through gift city into india so some of the common challenges which some some listeners may have faced is that pan aadhar linking has not happened in taking aadhar there was confusion whether nri can take aadhar or not take aadhar then is mobile linked to aadhar because you need to have otps all those troubles are over right simple very good. very, very, very documents very interesting the information document. that you are providing to the clients to investors Absolutely. you are providing a very very uh, very common information very but uh, important information to the uh, to the clients absolutely thanks thanks you can go ahead no so uh, so even for uh, that's for individuals but even when you look at the document list uh, requirement for uh, investment vehicles like companies and trusts it's clear cut there's no confusion right and and the list is uh, basic in terms of the requirements it's not going above and uh, there's no overreach happening over there there's no intrusion of privacy which is happening over there and uh, i'm sure in co- other competitive markets um we will stand uh, right up there in ranking in ease of investment now uh, just i would uh, suggest you to come to your uh, to brief to our investor your product its features okay. and um, investment horizon that you would su- uh, um, you could sure. uh, you would suggest to have absolutely yeah. so uh, before that can i add one thing while talking about advantages of gift city because yeah. in gift yeah. city uh, the gst tax is not applicable all right so actually a gift city investor is far better off in terms of the charges they would have to pay a manufacturer for managing their money as opposed to a domestic investor i'll take the base case of you know 2.5% fund management charge fixed fee for the year which is extremely common amongst indian manufacturers to offer now a domestic investor will end up paying 18% gst on that 2.5% as in when the charges are charged so that's that's close to 50 basis points year on year of taxes going to the government since gift city does not attract any gst the gift city investor is 50 basis points year on year better off than a domestic investor 
right so that's another very you know good, good, small good, caveat good. small advantage so for an nri investor who's thinking whether should i go domestic or should i go gift city because both are equal for me i'm on the edge of deciding um, i think this can be a, a important decision making criteria because uh, i mean money saved is money earned right yes yes very Ooh, fantastic so no, thank you for uh, uh, thank you for hearing me out in terms of all the advantages of gift city happy to you know discuss our product offering now on the gift city side so uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, motila loswal amc focuses only on equity as an asset class we've been doing this for 21 years we've brought our product in the aif structure uh, in in gift city and um, in aifs we are the largest players uh, in the industry with 10000 crores and that's why we chose a structure where we are very very comfortable to manage our clients money in fact the underlying portfolio now or the portfolio strategy is also our flagship strategy right which we call which we internally call the founders fund um, uh, that would you can take that as the brand name of the portfolio because as the name suggests we invest in companies in india which are led by their founders which also in uh, common terminology may be called promoter driven companies right and there is a clear trend in our in, uh, our indian markets where promoter driven companies have been doing far better in terms of price performance and delivering shareholder value as opposed to the other two cohorts which exist which is the multinational companies or public sector unit companies also called as psus so i'm just going to share my screen and use the help of a few slides to uh, you know just enhance the discussion which we are on today can you see my screen shina yes yes so again yeah Uh, there is one another uh, uh, interesting question uh, let me take that question once again and then we will we, we will finally go to go to your uh, product description sure uh, here one investor is asking how the stocks will be bought in inr or usd perfect so i mean uh, see the the stocks are being bought through the indian exchanges right mostly through nsc and very rarely through bse also and these exchanges operate in inr so what will happen in the background mechanically is that when as an investor you will transfer usd into our scheme account we will convert those usd into inr but difference yes. being uh, difference being that we will be getting institutional exchange rates from the banks and also getting priority rates being domiciled in gift city as opposed to an investor converting the money at their end from home currency or usd into inr where uh, you know there is a process of indian banks to uh, earn some commission on that conversion so as an institution we will have far more uh, aggressively negotiated rates in favor of the investor converting usd to inr and then participating in indian equity markets the same thing happens in reverse when the redemption request comes from investor where inr gets bought into usd and further transferred to your home account very good uh, one last question sure uh, one of our attendees asking if pms is launched via gift city what would be the taxation for such an investment once again to you over to you so, so i would say let's uh, let's wait and watch for a pms uh, product to be launched in gift city and then we'll have a lot more clarity on this question i don't want to make assumptions on the call uh, and it, it gift city is a developing story right and there are barely a handful of players out in gift city today so as yeah. and when the manufacturers are working with the regulator to uh, 
uh, thrash out and uh, make public the details, uh, more and more information is being shared as that process happens. So maybe as soon as the first PMS gets launched there, we'll have far more information. Yes, yes. Now, over to you once again for your product brief. And with this product brief, we will conclude the uh, our discussion. Okay. Because uh, I think just 20 minutes are uh, there now for us. Last. Sure. Absolutely. So the underlying product which Motila Loswal House brings to you under the uh, Gift City banner is called our Founders Portfolio. This founders portfolio, as the name suggests, invests into the into the best founder driven companies in India. Also, uh, you know, commonly called promoter driven companies in India, as opposed to the other two cohorts which exist, which is your uh, PSU companies, public sector units or multinational companies, MNCs. So let's see why we chose this strategy. There's some compelling data because of which we've gone ahead with this strategy. This is basically a slide showing you the best companies which you could have bought in India over the last 25 years. Um, it's a busy slide, but actually very easy to understand. Let me show you one table at a time. This table shows you the top 10 fastest growing companies in India for the last 25 years. And these orange dots represent that these companies are promoter driven companies. So nine out of 10 fastest growing companies for the last 25 years have been promoter driven. If you look at the biggest wealth creators in absolute amount, six out of 10 biggest wealth creators have been promoter driven. Nine out of 10 most consistently growing companies in India have been promoter driven for 25 years. Now, if you do an average ranking of the above three studies, 10 out of 10 best companies to have been owned in India in the last 25 years have been promoter driven. So clearly there is a mega trend in the Indian equity markets, which can be captured. Second, let's look at the reason why these results are showing up. If you look at the profit after tax growth, which is being delivered, promoter driven companies have a higher pad growth than MNC and PSU. Similarly, operating profit growth is higher than MNC and PSU. Similarly, revenue growth is also higher than MNC and PSU. So then these three studies make it quite obvious that the price performance and share shareholder value delivery is going to be better in promoter driven companies in Indian equity markets. In fact, since this uh, mega trend has been going on for very long, if you look at the last 10 years, the composition of our Nifty 500 index, which covers 92% of market cap in India, the composition of the index itself has shifted in 10 year period. In 2013, 50% of top 500 companies market cap was promoter driven. Today, 70% of market cap of top 500 companies is promoter driven. Not because of the number of companies going up that's just moved from 306 to 322 so barely any move there is because the average size of a founder driven company has moved from almost 2 billion to 6 billion that's a three times growth therefore the the composition of the entire market has shifted or got skewed toward that one cohort so that's the basic study. Now, how do you approach this study and how do you create a portfolio out of it? We have a very simple funnel for stock selection. You start with top 500 companies. The definition for us of a promoter driven company is where 26% of holding is with the promoter. That is the uh, lowest cutoff, which we are willing to work with. Uh, by the way, what we are doing very unique over here is that we are counting senior management ESOP as promoter holding. We believe that their wealth is attached to the company. They've been there for several years and they're not going anywhere either. So we treat them as promoters. And this gives us a big advantage because you can invest in banks, NBFCs and new age tech companies in India. Without this definition, unique definition of what is a promoter holding company, these very three high growth segments of Indian market would have had to be omitted. 
All right. So once we do this, we're left with 300 companies. We like profitable companies. So basic cutoff of 100 crore profit before tax every year, left with 260 companies. We like good business models. So ROC cutoff of 15%. I'm left with one fifth tech companies. Mm -hmm. And then comes a very important aspect of investing at Motila Loswal AMC, where we put a lot of emphasis on the quality of management. And, and these are soft checks because we are looking for management who have great vision, execution capability for that vision. Um, if they are family run businesses, then we want a very uh, a documented, hard coded succession plan. Uh, we want smart capital allocation, uh, growth mindset, and most importantly, integrity. Once these things are in place, we are left with about seven tech companies as a universe to work with, of which then our selection criteria is based on forward earning growth of that company. Right? We want to see high growth companies in our portfolio where the forward um, earning is far superior than the benchmark itself. And that gives us the right to win. That gives us the right to give a superior experience in terms of returns to our investors. So as a house positioning, what comes out strongly from this funnel is we believe in good quality. We believe in very high growth. And we also believe in buying these attributes in a company at a reasonable price. So we'll, we'll not overpay just because we're chasing quality or uh, or the growth aspect of the company. So essentially, how this has shaped up for us is in front of you in terms of the sector spread. You know, we have uh, uh, about eight, nine sectors very well represented over here. It's a pure bottom up process. So you'll find that the active ratio, which means uh, uh, the percent of our portfolio, which is away from benchmark, both in terms of selection as well as an allocation, we are about 70-80% away from the benchmark. And benchmark here is the very widely spread BSC 500 index, right? And uh, each company which has made it to the portfolio is on its own merit, uh, on its own basis of their forward growth, uh, and not because they exist in the index or have a a uh, high weightage in the index. We don't do anchor investing. Uh, we do pure bottom up portfolio selection. And what you see on the left side of each of these, uh, 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 each of these definitions of their stock names is the theme under which we bought it. So we follow these high growth themes, which are according to us, high probability winners going mm -hmm. forward, right? So. The urbanization theme represents the changing spending trends in India because the uh, uh, because the assets or the earnings of Indian households are rising sharply and that's causing the spending trend to change in tech and tech services in uh, we like software and we like new age tech as opposed to the traditional IT services. And you see names like eMudra and Zomato over there respectively. Uh, businesses are choosing to diversify away from China. We call it the China plus one theme under which we've selected the chemicals industry today. There are several industries which you can choose from. Uh, within the pharma sector, we like hospitals. There's a mushroom growth of hospitals happening in India and their business is booming. Uh, in in banks, we like mid cap banks because the growth is high. Large cap banks are facing slightly slower growth today and it looks like it will happen for the next couple of years. And in NBFCs, we like fast AUM growing companies as well as capital market participants because the uh, the new uh, pans or the new DMATs which are opening in Indian market is really encouraging and is increasing profits for these brokers. Lastly, is a very, uh, very important investment theme, which is make in India. For us, this includes all the companies which are in engineering, defense, auto, auto ancillary, um, uh, electric manufacturing, um, as well as PLI beneficiaries. You know, the government gave out the incentive production linked incentive scheme for manufacturing companies to increase their output and production. And uh, this has immediately led to the pat growth of these companies and for them to put up private capex as well. So very well spread across these 
uh, investment ideas as well as within the investment idea you will find there's industry diversification so it's a very crisp portfolio of about uh, 24 stocks right now and our idea is to remain around this 25 stock number we believe it's adequate diversification as well as not over diversification and gives us very high growth ideas to work with at all times if i have to summarize for you what our positioning what i said is our house positioning and how that translate into the portfolio today i said we are a very high growth portfolio maker so the index growth for next two years looks like 16%. Our portfolio earning growth for next two years has come up at 33%. And we believe stocks are slaves of earnings. So um, that's where we want to uh, build our future returns for our investors from. And in terms of valuation, we have not overpaid for this growth. So our PEG uh, price earning growth ratio, which we follow for valuations, our peg is at 1.2 versus market 1.6 peg lower the better so we are actually at 25 percent discount to market so on valuation side uh, we are at an advantage rather than being at a disadvantage the portfolio is a young portfolio it was uh, incepted uh, about 15 months back and since then it's uh, found its place as one of the best performing funds in india the it is currently available for domestic investors in PMS avatar as well as an AIF avatar. So our PMS investors have a one year return of 61%. Our AIF investors in the same portfolio have a return of 65%. We believe in less is more. So we believe in creating winning portfolios and then offering it across vehicles. Uh, and then depending on the investors need the right vehicle would be advised by the advisor. And therefore, our winning portfolio is now available in its third avatar under the Gift City banner. Very, very, very well. easy to understand concept as well as a, a, a winning idea as well. Very well explained, Sugyam. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here and explain in detail all, all, all in detail, specifically uh, the new pandora pandora box of gift city absolutely we would expect uh, we would expect a, a good good amount of interest in gift city going forward thank you once again to you and the available exactly. investors investors uh, that are there uh, online and we would take your thank you thank you very much srinath Thank you to Vikas as well and thank you to the entire AIF PMS team. It's always a pleasure to uh, be here and to be able to talk about investment ideas and uh, hope to be here more often. Thank you.